Hey guys, welcome to the new year, and in this video we have a very special guest. Well, not really a guest because it is a permanent addition to the collection, but this PS2 Slim, and now this is not just any PS2 Slim as you might be thinking. This is a special PS2 Slim because it is one of Ryan Garrett's most viewed videos to date, this very PS2 right here. And unfortunately, it kind of died sitting, and it works. I can actually plug it up to power because I do have the power adapter quite convenient right here, and I'm gonna go ahead and plug that in right now. And we can see that it does in fact work. I don't have a capture card that can capture what this outputs, so you won't see anything, but we do have a red light. And if I push that, it kind of just gives up and doesn't read anything. So. Yeah, kind of unfortunate, but what can you do? Try it again. Yeah, it doesn't even really try to read it, unfortunately. So, given that a free McBoot memory card for one of these costs, I don't know, $10, and the actual optical drive assembly for one of these is like 30 I opted to just say, you know what, we're not going to bother replacing the optical drive at all. Because I do have a lot of games for it because he gave me his full game collection. But those are mostly, as we can see here, racing games. And none of those really interest me all that much. I'll keep them around with the PS2 as like a package deal. I'm not going to get rid of them. I'll put them in the library somewhere. But, yeah. So we're going to go ahead and t take this thing apart. Just like that, we can now open the PS2 just right up like that. Super easy. And I'm going to go ahead and actually clean this part off because we have a little bit of dirt in the PS2 logo there. This thing really was a marvel of engineering because I remember when this thing first came out. And it was crazy just how much smaller it is than the PS2 Fat. Like, I couldn't believe it when it first came out. I actually bought one of these because I originally did have... A PS2 fat that died due to disc read errors and Sony was just like yeah you're gonna have to pay like pretty much the price of a new console to get it repaired so I figured you know why why deal with that so it's not really all that dirty in here and admittedly because I already cleaned kind of cleaned it up I did do some work to the optical drive here I did put some grease on here to kind of loosen it up just in case that was the problem alas it was not so Really kind of sad, but what can you do? So I'm looking at other things in here because I do want to take this apart a bit further to get under the board here. So we're going to go ahead and take this part out because I believe that's holding us up. And there's also this little board right here, which will want to come up. That's our power button. Might also be missing something under the optical drive itself. But no, no, that was it. So there's the bottom and we have a whole bunch of screws. So, I'm going to go ahead and get this apart a bit further. I believe we can just pull this off and... and I'm not terribly worried about this because, again, this drive, I have given it a chance. It is toast. I'm not going to worry about it too much here. Gee, that just came out just like that. Okay. That yeah, might have torn a little bit, but I could probably get a replacement for that. I'm not too worried about it. Again, I do not plan to put another optical drive in here when we could just free McBoot it and I can load ISAs over the network. I know some people are like, that's not authentic, but personally, I do not care. The only thing I care about at this point is being able to play PS2 games in hardware and not emulated. So we have a bunch of screws on the back side here. I think some on the other side as well. I believe all of these need to come out. And then we can get further into the machine, or the console. There's our fan. It's got a little bit of grunginess to it. I'm not going to bother trying to unplug that because it... That does not feel confident to me. And given that this thing is old, I do not feel like tempting fate. So... I think this has to come out any well pull it out from this side. 
and I'm not super worried about this. So let's see if these are the right bits. Again, using JIS for this because that is the proper bit you want to use. And there we go. They actually have the battery in a holder. So that means I can very quickly replace that. Very nice. And there is a thermal pad here for the, uh, uh, is it the RSX or whatever the PS2 CPU plus GPU is? Because as we can see on here, it's down to one chip. If we flip it over, we can get this part off and plastic insulation. There's our PS2. So yeah, really not much going on down here. I'm just taking this apart to do my due diligence and it's actually pretty clean. Again, this thing mostly sat, so I'm not terribly surprised, but it's very nice to see. So because this is a thermal pad, I'm not gonna bother with this. I'm actually not going to replace the thermal paste because that would be a very bad idea. So I'm just going to give this a quick brushing just some surface dust here, it looks like. Really nothing wrong here. So while I'm going through this, you might be wondering, Exodium, where have you been? What have you been doing? And I am mostly, these days, a guest on other people's live streams, which is kind of funny, but I kind of have the same outlook on this as Joe from Joe's Computer Museum does, and that is, Live content is just easier to produce. There's no editing involved and you kind of just roll the camera, do what you're going to do. And that's kind of it. So that's kind of why I like appearing on other people's streams and doing lives of my own because, well, editing content is a lot of time. So, but I figured, you know, I could make an exception for this PS2 because it's, very special and it's a good thing we got in here because as we can see I'm trying to bring it up to you guys to see here this battery is actually corroding so it's a good thing we open this up to get the battery out now I could just go you know without the battery but there are some games that I'm potentially planning on playing like Metal Gear Solid 3 that depend on the system having a functioning clock so I'm going to put the battery in and plus given it's not that hard to get in and out of this system I really don't care so given that the metal is in really good shape I'm not going to really deal with cleaning this up because again this looks brand new so I'm gonna go ahead and just cut the camera while we reassemble this and get to the next part of the video and there we go so let's go ahead and plug everything back in. Well, kind of already done most of that. But I'm going to go ahead and just screw it in now. It doesn't try to run away on me. Like I said, I really do not care if this works or doesn't because I am not going to be using the disk drive on this. Again, I might, I might fix it down the line if I can grab an assembly for cheaper than 30 bucks. But as of right now, I legitimately do not care i know somebody's gonna say adjust the laser again and i've actually already got it pretty much maxed out at this point because if i try to dial it down any lower it's probably gonna start damaging both the laser and discs i put into it so it's kind of at the point where i can't really get any more out of it and, and i see this may be a point at which i actually yeah haha <laughs> I put a screw in the wrong hole and it's not going to damage anything, but the screw is not supposed to be there. And when you try and screw something into that hole that actually goes there, you're going to be very sad. This screw goes somewhere. I'm not sure. Have I mentioned how much I love these ribbon cables? It's just so finicky. There we go. That's in there. And then this one is just friction fit. Just gotta get it aligned and then push down. 
There you go. And this one, I believe, is also friction fit. There we go. Now we can also just grab our good old power supply over here and very quickly make sure we did not kill the PS2. So that would be terrible if we had killed it, wouldn't it? Plug it in. Red light, green light, and we can also do this. And we have a switch back here and a second switch up here. And as we can see, it just is very sad. So that's kind of that for the disk drive. But again, it's not what we were here to fix. Now I do believe, in fact, that this will still read CDs perfectly fine. I did not touch the laser adjustment for the CD drive. Let's get one of my favorite albums out here. And I don't have to worry about it being shredded because this is pretty open. Let's see what it's supposed to do. Supposed to sound like. Once again. I feel a nice draft of air coming out. It might not act, it might actually do the same thing because uh, I have nothing to tell it, hey, start playing. But as we can see now, it is still spinning and it's going perfectly fine. So that's what it's supposed to do. Because again, this system has the very same problem as my original Fat PS2 did, where it eventually just quit being able to read DVDs. Probably because the laser is getting worn out or something like that. In fact, I think that isn't 90% the problem. And adjusting the laser does help, but it ultimately only extends the inevitable at this point because the laser is dying and by cramming more power through it you're gonna get it to work but it's not gonna last very much longer honestly my hope was to get this working enough to get free dvd boot working but alas what can you do so i'm gonna go ahead and clean these up there's a little bit of a uh, surface dust in here and of course we have the PS2 logo kind of dusty. So I'm gonna pause the camera, clean those up, and we will be right back. All right, with our mischief managed, let's go ahead and put everything back in. There we go, all looks good. Also, as ABS plastic does, we had a little bit of it chip off, but again, what can you do? That. The motherboard is now secured. So I do believe this might come out if you provoke it enough, but this little bit right here for the vertical stand, just make sure that's in the right place when you go to put this thing back together. And it should just fall right back together. And you wanna make sure that this is also aligned up because it likes to not align properly and it can get very angry. So let's put it all back together now. Nice. So let's go ahead and fire it up real quick and see if it still works. Red light. Green light. It spins the disc perfectly fine. Yeah, there we go. 
So there you have it. The million or two million view PS2. Now pretty fresh. I mean, without a disk drive, working disk drive. But that's not going to matter once we get free McBoot onto it. So hopefully you enjoyed this uh, bit of a weird video that I decided to do on a whim. And until next time, I'll see you guys later.